guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Well, that's not my kitchen, but this is. <laughs> so I've got some jars hanging out over there that have been already washed and they're waiting for me. I've got my dehydrator completely packed and since I've dropped it, I don't trust it to be running overnight. So I only run it during the day. So it still needs to be turned back on. His name is Robo, he's a robot vacuum doing the floors and uh, yeah, everyone here is working hard. My husband's in his office, I'm in the kitchen and let's preserve some stuff. I picked 37, yes, you heard that correctly, 37 pounds of blueberries the other day and I love going to this farm. It's Jay's Berry Farm out in Kelowna, uh, sorry, out in Lake Country and they don't spray anything on their blueberries. In fact, I technically don't even have to wash them if I didn't want to, but I do, so. And they're so delicious. So we've got to process those. My goal is to make blueberry jam and blueberry soup uh, juice. And then I'm also gonna freeze a whole bunch for fresh eating later on. And what else do I have? I have all these zucchinis. I've cut up most of them into the dehydrator as well as the pata pans, the bigger ones. Um, these ones I still have to cut up. This one is gonna be made into a zucchini boat for another episode. I'm gonna do half vegetarian, half with meat. So I'll show you that later in another episode. And we've got some corn from Sarah's yard that I planted, so that needs to be cut off the cob and put into freezer bags. And what else? That's it, so let's get started. I'm just setting these guys out to dry and these will be packaged up to go into the freezer and we're going to be eating them in the winter. Now when you freeze blueberries they basically will stay this shape and they're the easiest. You don't have to blanch them, nothing. Once these guys dry for the most part you just pop them into whatever container whatever you want but when you thaw them out, they're not gonna be this perfectly shaped. They kind of get wrinkled. Now for the most part, they'll maintain their shape, but the way that I really like using them is putting a bag worth of blueberries into a pot, then throwing a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice, depending on what I'm doing and what flavor I want, and then putting a little bit of honey or sugar in there and then drizzling it over anything. Pancakes, waffles, desserts, angel food cake, um, pretty like any coffee cake. If you want, oh, cheesecake. It is the best on cheesecake. Just a little drizzle, it's fresh, it's, oh, it's delicious. I still have, <laughs> I haven't even really put a dent in this. The, the majority of these will be used for uh, juicing. And then for this guy, I have to take all the stems off um, and they are getting a few days old, but that's okay because these guys are going to be used for jam. I think I just had an aha moment. I've just kind of been winging it, well I did wing it when I was making my apricot juice, but I was flipping through this book yesterday, which is, as you guys know, my go-to um, canning book. And this is the one that I found that has the most information out of all of them that were at the library um, and whatnot. So this is, I think it's great news. So I never realized that a jelly is basically like a solid jello version of juice. So when I was really struggling on finding a recipe for apricot juice, I should have actually just gone over to the jelly section and I could have used the peach juice because peaches and apricots are both the fuzzy stone fruit. So I can't see them being that much different from each other. And over here, let me show you. There's an entire jelly section. And what I did was for these, like just for today, I just found this. So I'm doing blueberries. So berry juice for jelly. It basically tells you exactly what to do. Now, I'm not, mind you, I'm not making the jelly, but it tells you basically how to make the juice, which I'm okay with. 
But then over here, quick set jellies. Well, they've got their fruits here. So for berries, it's two tablespoons of lemon juice for this and sugar, which I'm not adding any sugar to this whatsoever, but, and I'm not adding any pectin. I'm literally just canning juice. So instead of making the jelly, which I have no desire to make whatsoever, I'm gonna scrap the sugar, scrap the pectin, and just to be on the safe side, because I don't know, like I didn't measure the three and a half cups, I just kind of threw them in. Um, I'm still gonna put a tablespoon of lemon juice, well, I'm actually using lime juice because I need to get through it, um, into each jar, and they're the one liter jars, so the ones that are next up from um, the pint, which I think is 500 mil. Um, but anyways, I'm using the one, the one liter jars. And then the only other question that I have is over here, it says bring to a boil and process for 10 minutes, which for me, I have to add five minutes to everything and then remove from the can or wait the five minutes, blah, blah, blah. So that's what this book says. However, this is the book that the steamer, that the steam juicer came in. So juices that are freshly squeezed or from raw fruit, which is what I'm doing, can be filled into bottles and heated in a water bath for whatever, for 25 minutes. So I did the apricots at 15 minutes, but, and then seal it immediate, immediately as directed. So basically can it. So what I'm thinking is, yes, it's freshly squeezed, but if this book is telling me that I can, I only have to do it for 10 minutes plus the five minutes for my elevation, I can go through this instead of going through this because I think this is meaning that once it's steamed, then you let it cool down in the jars. Then you have to bring it back up to this temperature and then keep it in there for 25 minutes so that it comes up to this temperature. This is how I'm kind of taking this as. So let me know if I'm way off base on this. Um, but yeah, so this is exciting because it took forever to can up and uh, the water bath, the, that apricot juice. But if I can only get, if I can only do it for 15 minutes, then I'm going to make a whole lot more juice than I planned because now I have just so much more time for it now. We're back over here. I've put one tablespoon of each uh, into each jar and I'm using the Santa Cruz pure lime. I don't know why it's not coming in focus. There we go. This is what I'm using. And we're just going to line that up. And before I do that, I just need to get some paper towels and some vinegar. Remember a few episodes back when I was making the raspberry, what was in there? Raspberry lime and rhubarb jam. That's what it was. And also my strawberry and also my half cap. And I had the worst struggle with pectin. Guess what I found at Canadian Tire? Oh my God. Can I just tell you how excited I am over this pectin? It's no sugar needed pectin. 
Uh, so it's for light fruit spreads made with less sugar, no sugar, or Splenda. I don't use Splenda. I just, I know nothing about it. Um, and um, it says no sugar, but the blueberries, they're not the sweetest blueberries I've ever picked. They're delicious. However, I did put in four cups of sugar. Now I quadrupled the recipe and for each batch it called for, let me see. It called for, okay, so for four and a half cups of crushed blueberries, it asked for seven cups of sugar. That to me is insane to have more sugar than actual product. I don't know. I think it's just bizarre. So, um, and that would make eight, 250 mil jars or eight, eight ounce jars. So I figured I have 500 mil jars, which are pints and I want to double that. So I need to quadruple this because this basically makes half of what I want. Yes. Um, when I'm using 500 mil jars or pints, I believe they're called. So I'm still going to use, Oh, I just, I just realized I actually need to use four pouches and I just dropped one. Um, so I need to use four pouches of the pectin and that's okay because I'm still going to stick with the four cups of sugar. What I'm thinking of doing is during this whole journey of making stuff, preserving stuff, going crazy, figuring out that I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, even though I'm reading the books. Um, my confidence is not quite there because I can't find exactly what I want. So I'm kind of having to wing it and I'm not comfortable with it, but I'm doing it anyways to get out of my comfort zone because I've always seen and read, do not stray off of the recipes whatsoever, especially when it comes to canning. But when there's like an, ex just a ridiculous amount of sugar, I don't feel comfortable feeding my family that because I might as well go get a can of Coke and be like, here you go. It's nutritious, which it's not. Um, so it is what it is. I'm taking a huge gamble. I think I've read enough about stuff that I'm okay with it. Um, and when I was looking at jellies, look, fruit juices. But when you go to the back and look under blueberry juice or juice or whatever, it never brings you to this page. I was literally flipping through every single page of this book. So finally on a page 187, I found it. Fruit juices. So in here, it's just berries, water, sugar, and it's optional. So I figure if the sugar is optional for the juice, which I'm not adding any sugar whatsoever to my juice, I should be fine with the jam adding like an eighth. Before I get and continue on to other stuff, 
I just quickly wanted to show you what this is. I just have mint on there right now. And then once this is dried, I just basically put a bowl up to this lip throw it all in there and then I've got a mason jar filled with teas. These are the chrysanthemums that are ready and I just put them face down when I collect the heads because I want them to look nice in the tea. If you put them straight up they just kind of shrivel up and the leaves don't look like like the petals don't look like petals anymore. Um, they look kind of gnarly looking but when you put them face down there's a shot that <laughs> most of them will still look pretty nice so uh, these guys are done. This is my tea blend from the garden. So I've got, um, I've got uh, marigolds. Uh, those are the Zwote Lan that I did at the polyculture um, garden that I had. And I also spread a whole bunch of it in the backyard. And then I've got some chrysanthemums. I've got some calendula in here. So this is basically my tea blend. And then over here, I've got some nasturtium leaves and I've got some raspberry leaves so those will go in there as well and I just blend this up I put make a hot tea in a big jar then I cool it down and thin it out with water so uh, we're nicely stocked up for the winter I want to get away from buying juice boxes for the kids so what I've been doing all this summer is collecting as much as I can for making tea and actually making basically an iced tea and giving it to the kids for when they take it to summer camps and they actually now ask me to make tea. This is great. I know it's not a year's worth but it's a start. Her yard. Mind you I did help her um, create her garden but still like I was very grateful for the opportunity that she gave me a whole chunk in her backyard so and she's been watering it and taking care of it so it was a no-brainer to, to tell her listen you did just as much work as I did have half the corn so I love it it's kind of like a community homesteady you know she lives on three acres I don't <laughs> I get the best of both worlds I think Okay, so I'm gonna, that other one has quite a bit that ha, that is developed, but the chickens go crazy over the corn cobs. So, you know what? I'm just gonna give it to them. So, they love it. And then any other, like all of this corn, I'm gonna be giving to the chickens. They peck through it, dig through it. Um, and chickens love bugs. So my theory, or our theory, is that we're going to be giving the, the chickens like as many greens as we can a they love it but b we figure as they're digging around it gives them something to do kind of like a toy um but in that they'll be kind of composting it back into the soil that they live on and then worms will want to come and bugs and whatever and then as they're scratching around in their place hey if they happen to find a worm or whatnot because it's attracted to kind of like the composty layer that I'm thinking that they're going to build, um, then they'll be able to munch on something else. So, oh my god. Okay, if there was ever a movie about a cob of corn, this would be it. Look at this. Holy cow. I've never grown corn before, and I will always grow corn. Look at this. I'm going to go for a close-up. Look how absolutely perfect this corn is. And I don't even think the lighting's doing its justice. Oh my gosh, look at that. And yes, I am one of those people that eat corn raw. Oh, one, one didn't get um, pollinated, but that's okay. Other than that, oh, it's perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe that should be my thumbnail. Alrighty. So I've got, look at all this corn. So what am I doing with this? Well, what I've done in the past, when I've purchased corn from farmers, is I've just taken a knife to all of them and I have just gone and just cut everything off and I'm just putting it into the freezer. With this one, I'm gonna leave a couple for fresh eating for tonight for dinner. 
and then I think I'll only end up with a bag for later, which is fine. And then it'll go into the freezer. And then all of this stuff will go into the chicken coop. Oh, okay. So that was a buy. Uh, so this one that I showed you of the close up was the peaches and cream corn. And then this guy, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Look at this. Just perfection. I could not ask for more beautiful corn if I tried. I, I couldn't. Now there were some earwigs um, that were starting to lay eggs in the corn. So it's funny because I see one right now. So this guy has been trying to get out of the bowl for a few days now. Oh, and he just got out. Now I have no idea where he is. Anyways, he's in there somehow, somewhere. So this is now gonna officially go outside. This is a definitely a funny season for me gardening and I haven't been able to have any success with zucchini whatsoever or patapans or anything from that family. So I've been blessed with all of these patapans and zucchinis and I am so lucky that I have a great friend that gave me all of her leftovers. Um, so what I've been doing is I'm dehydrating these and then what I'll be doing is I'll be adding these to chilies, to pasta sauces, to soups, to stews. And I'm so blessed and I can't wait to just add more to this pile. This is the second batch of pata pans that I'm dehydrating. And in total, I've done four so far. And you'd be surprised how much they, they shrink. They shrink to almost nothing. I've been able to fill all these jars and I keep thinking that I'm gonna run out of room in the jar and it never seems to happen, which is strange. I just have the one jar that I've filled up. But my goal with preserving all of these dehydrated is I'm not yet comfortable with pressure canning. I've got that pressure canner that I bought secondhand, but I'm just not there yet. And instead of letting all this produce go to waste, I figure let's dehydrate it because the, the space in my freezer is high valued space for me. I don't have a lot of it and dehydrating is the next best thing. So I'm trying it that route. And a lot of these are gonna be for stews and for soups and for chilies, which my family absolutely loves. And I got these peppers from a local farmer, which I am more than happy to support because I know how it's grown. I know these farmers very well. They farm a lot like I do. They don't spray a bunch of stuff. Um, and I wanna, you know, and I wanna support them as much as possible. And it actually ends up being cheaper than what I can get peppers at the store. So at the end of the day, I would love to have more money in my account than give it away. And I'm also supporting a local farmer, which is, I think, fantastic. So I'm doing these peppers. I've also picked up some other produce and I'm just dehydrating as much as possible. And I also have a lot of parsley going on in the garden. So what I've done is a lot of it I have dried for later and I have preserved quite a bit into, that, uh, into the freezer. So what I've done is I've cut that fresh and I've put it into old 
yogurt or sour cream containers and I've popped them in the freezer just so when I want to have you know fresh parsley drizzled on top of something I've got that fresh parsley all ready to go right here what I'm doing is for the most part I was actually stripping the parsley right here I'm taking the stems of the parsley and putting them into a bag so that I can use it for soups later on and those just hang out in the freezer I've tried dehydrating them before and I don't like them as much and I did see that I did have some cherry tomatoes that were looking a little worse for wear. They actually surprisingly look a lot better in this picture than they did when they were in the fridge. So <laughs> it's, it's a little deceiving right here, but I figured I'd got the dehydrator turned on. I might as well load it up to the nines. So I'm just cutting them in half. I'm dehydrating them. They end up looking like shriveled up raisins. So I just keep them, keep them in a jar without anything. And then uh, when I want to use sun-dried tomatoes, I pour some olive oil on top and it, after about two, three weeks, they're good to go. I didn't do that right off the bat because I still have some in the fridge, but once those are out and the jars coming to an end, I'll be pouring olive oil on top of these. It is the next day and I wanted to thank you guys for hanging out with me on my channel and just to go over everything I made yesterday. So we've got our blueberry jam. I have one blueberry juice that was left over. It's right there. I've got blueberry juice over here. So we've got 12 liters essentially. And then this little, this little guy. And we've got some parsley. These are the peppers and they've shrunk into almost nothing. So it's great because you don't have to designate a lot of storage space for dehydrated items, which is fantastic. Up front here, we've got those cherry tomatoes that I dehydrated and they're nicely shriveled up. I do have um, a sun-dried tomato that's in olive oil that's sitting in the fridge. The jar's not quite done yet. So these are gonna be on the reserve in the pantry, just hanging out. And when those ones are done uh, or almost done, I'll just cover these with olive oil and then pop them in the fridge. And in about, I like giving them about two solid two weeks just so they can absorb that oil back up. And I'll be putting that in. These are the nasturtiums and raspberry leaf uh, for tea. These are the mint and the flowers that I was able to collect so far for tea. And out of all those pata pans and zucchinis, uh, this is all I have just this big jar and this little guy that started off because I officially harvested my very first zucchini from the garden. I am going to probably eat that guy, but I'm really hoping that I can get some more and fill up this jar. I wanted to thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I hope you got something out of the show today and until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.